This is Holy Week. And we named the Thursday of Holy Week Mondi Thursday. Our word Mondi comes from a Latin word, mandatum. Mandatum means commandment. It was on this day that Jesus gave a new commandment. Jesus said, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Today, our seminarian, Joel Werner, will talk with us about how we celebrate this day. And we celebrate this day by loving and serving others. Serving is not just something to do. Serving is our life. And serving begins with Jesus and his life for us. You know, that first Monday Thursday was a day of chaos and confusion, betrayal and denial. Let's reflect on that day. Let's see Jesus' love and hear his invitation to love. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments.
When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If we haven't had the chance to meet yet, my name is Joel. I'm a student at Concordia Seminary here in St. Louis, where I'm studying to become a pastor. And I have the pleasure of sharing God's word with you today. It's funny, whenever I mention that I'm going to become a pastor, I'm studying at seminary, whenever I mention that to a pastor, I often get the same response. Pastor will get a smile on his face and he'll think back to his own time at seminary. And he'll tell me a story from when he was a student. One example of this happening was when a pastor got that same smile on his face and he told me this story. At the time when he was at seminary, he wasn't married yet, uh, so he actually lived on campus and ate all of his meals in the cafeteria. Normally, dinner time was a time for students to quickly scarf down some food before heading to the library to write a paper, or maybe for the less academic students. Dinner was a time to joke around and goof off with one another while they ate. But one night was different. One night at dinner time, one of his professors walked in with his own tray of food. And not just any professor, but one of the oldest, most respected professors at the seminary. Immediately, these students who were just eating with their friends were stunned by this surprise appearance by such an honored professor. And they quickly made room for their professor to sit at the middle of the table, and they all gathered around to listen to him. Apparently, the professor's wife was busy that night, and he decided to spend his dinner with his students in the cafeteria. What was normally a meaningless meal for those students was changed into something unusual and something special. They talked for hours with their beloved professor about a number of things. See, that professor did something that seemed beneath him that night by eating with his students. And now, some 30 years later, that old pastor who I was talking to could still recall that unique night with joy to me. A similar thing is recorded in our reading today. When Jesus washed the disciples' feet, he was acting far outside the ordinary, and he was doing something that was beneath him. This wasn't a typical night for Jesus and the disciples. Allow me to set the scene for what we now call Maundy Thursday. Jesus and the disciples were in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, and Jesus knew that he was on his way to die on the cross. Now, the disciples celebrated Passover every year, but this time was different. This meal was different. For starters, Jesus was saying some strange things. When they were eating dinner, Jesus was saying things like, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And then when Jesus was handing out the bread, he called the bread his body. And when he was handing out the wine, he called that wine his blood. Yeah, it, it was a strange meal. And after dinner, it only got stranger. Jesus only did more strange things. As they finished eating, Jesus took off his nicer clothes, his outer garments, and he tied a towel around his waist. And then he got a bowl and water and started washing the disciples' feet. This was weird. See, washing feet was not a job for people like Jesus. This was a dirty job that only the lowest of the lowest servants actually did. In fact, one of Jesus' disciples told him this. When Jesus tries to wash Peter's feet, Peter says, No way. He says, you shall never wash my feet. But Jesus insists. He says to Peter, if I do not wash you, then you have no share with me. This foot washing, this was important to Jesus. And when Jesus is done, he explains why it's so important. He says, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you an example that you should do just as I have done to you. 
an example that you should do just as I have done to you. This was a strange ending to a strange meal. The disciples' teacher, the very Son of God, did a humiliating task in order to serve his disciples. And then he turns around and says, this humiliating, gross thing, this was an example for you guys to do. These are some important words for the disciples and important for us. So let's dig into that a little bit. What does it mean that Jesus was and is an example for us? Well, for starters, Jesus is telling us that we're servants. The disciples thought that they were learning from Jesus in order to gain power and prestige. They could not have been more wrong. Following Jesus is not about getting to the top of the corporate ladder, nor would it be about gaining anything worthwhile according to the world's standards. No, following Jesus is about this sort of work, this gross, humiliating service for other people. That's what Jesus is calling his disciples to, and he's telling them that their lives are to be spent serving one another in the same way that Jesus was acting out then and there. But there's more to Jesus being an example than that. See, Jesus could have just told his disciples, serve one another, do even the most humiliating tasks for one another. And Jesus, Jesus could have left it at that. He didn't have to get dirty washing the feet. I mean, Jesus, that's what Jesus did when he told the Pharisees about the golden rule. When he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus didn't give them an example there. So what's so special about him giving an example here? Well, before Jesus invites his disciples to serve, he's first taking care of the disciples' needs. As Jesus commands his followers to give of themselves, he first provides for them. Before he tells them to wash one another's feet, he washed theirs. This may seem insignificant for something as small as having dirty feet, but in this example, Jesus is showing us, his followers, how he works. Jesus demands a lot from his followers. He requires that we give up of our money, our time, our pride. I mean, being a servant is taxing. It takes everything out of you. But Jesus doesn't just demand that we do this and leave us at that. Before we could even begin to serve, Jesus has already served us more than we could ever serve one another. On Maundy Thursday, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. And on Good Friday, Jesus gave up his life for us. This foot washing isn't just a surprising thing Jesus did after dinner. And it's not just a memory for the disciples to talk about 30 years after the fact. In this example, Jesus shows us his mission for the world and for you and me. In his death, he suffered what we deserved. And in his resurrection, he firmly defeated death forever. We can never repay Jesus for his service to us. But that's not the point. Jesus doesn't want us to repay him. He wants us to be a part of him, to be a part of his mission, to serve with him, to care for those who are in need, to give up of our own earthly goods because Jesus gives us more important things than earthly goods, to give up of our own earthly honor because Jesus has given us a heavenly honor that we can never earn ourselves. And Jesus wants us to give up even of our own lives because Jesus has already given his life for us and he's given us life everlasting with him. It's a remarkable thing what Jesus did when he washed the disciples' feet. And it is a life-changing thing what he did on the cross for all of us. And now that we have been served completely, we are freed and he invites us to serve. Amen. Let's apply what Joel talked about. Jesus gave us his love and Jesus commanded us that you should do just as I have done to you. Just as. Here's what I want you to do. Spend a few moments and think about the depth and the magnitude of Jesus' love. How would you describe his love? Write down some words that describe the magnitude of his love. Then think about what you can do this weekend. Not a token amount of love, but complete, sacrificial, self-denial love. What does that look like in your life, in your relationships? You know, thanks for worshiping with us. Let's worship together again on Good Friday. The Lord bless you.